Hey guys, Random Cat here, and we're up to episode 31, I believe. Um, was it 31 or 32? Either way, it's getting there. Um, we have just talked to Suzaha and found out that she's John Titor. So, let's get right back into it. When I come to, I'm standing with my phone in my hand. While I wait for the ringing in my ears to subside, I check the date and time of my phone screen. August 11th, 2.21. Alright. Now I have two more days. As a matter of fact, I leapt twice. First at 2pm on the 13th, when the time machine was completed. From there I leapt an additional 48 hours to 2pm on the 11th. It was my first consecutive leap, but it seems to have gone well. I immediately head downstairs to see Suzaha. I'm relieved to see that her hand isn't burned. When I explain the situation, Suzaha races to Radikan to confirm my story. After she realizes that I'm telling the truth, I take her back to the lab and have her repeat the explanation she gave us before our time left. We come to the conclusion that we all can do, uh, that all we can do right now is try our best to repair Suzaha's time machine. Yeah. Let's go take a look. Daru is unusually enthusiastic. I guess Suzaha's talk of attractor fields and divergence and correcting history's mistakes got his blood pumping. Hold on, everyone. Mayuri stops us as we're about to leave the lab. Um, guys, aren't we forgetting something? Like what? What about Suzu-san's dad? Alright. Thought Suzuha was lying about that. But when I turn to her, she looks away. That doesn't matter now, does it? It does too. I mean, it'll take time to fix the time machine, won't it? We should help Suzu-san find her dad in the meantime. Right? But... When I show reluctance, Mayuri puffs out her cheeks. Don't be like that, Okarin. You have to keep your promise. What promise? We promised, remember? We said we'd all look for Suzuha's dad. That's right. We convinced her to stay by promising to look for her father. Yeah, I remember. I know, Suzu-san has a mission and stuff, but I think she also came because she really wanted to meet her dad. Maybe she wants to make that happen. If Mayuri feels that strongly about it, there's no way I can refuse. Shina Mayuri, you're such a nice girl. Suzuha sniffles. You're right. I thought I could find him if I came to this town. I know that he was in Akihabara in 2010. So your father's real? Of course he is. At this age, he's probably still young and cool. His name was Barrel Title, right? Yeah. That's right. A foreigner? うん。多分日本人。バレルタイターはレジスタンス時代のコードネーム。だから今の2010年の時点だとまだそうなのってないと思う。No, I'm pretty sure he's Japanese. Barrel Titer is his codename in the resistance. I don't think he's using it yet. So that's why Suzaha called herself John Titor. I don't know his real name. Some daughter, huh? Suzaha looks like she's about to cry for an instant, but she quickly covers it with a bit of smile. He died before he could tell me. 
Hearing that, I realize how selfish, how hellish the world she came from must really be. What about your surname, Amane? That was my mother's maiden name. So you have no leads? Leads. Oh, there is one thing. Suzaha claps her hands together and starts patting her pockets. A few seconds later, she reaches into one and pulls out a badge. Pin badge? A pin badge? I've seen Suzaha fiddling with it before. It's just a, a regular pin. Can't you stick on your hat or bag? There's something written on it. It reads... Is that a 7? No, that's a 2010. It reads OSHM star 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 A7010, which is 2010. This belonged to my dad. A memento. Google it, Daru. Daru runs the search, but gets only incomprehensible foreign sites. He was here in Akihabara, so I think we can exclude the foreign sites. Okay, got it. He narrows the search down to Japanese sites. But even then, none of the results look relevant. Nothing. But this has to be some kind of hint. With Suzuha's permission, I take a picture of the pin. Okay, all in favor is helping Suzuha-san find her dad. I want to argue that there's no time for that. But Mayu is right when she says that the time machine won't be ready for a while. I guess there's no harm in letting her have her way. After all, there's no point in running, not even with two days head start. Even if I dragged Mayuri to the ends of the earth, we wouldn't be able to escape her death. I know that now. No objections. Thanks, Okarin. <laughs> Daddy raises his hand in agreement. So that's Kurisu. Um, it's decided. We'll help Suzaha find her father. Everyone, thank you. But I want to be clear that my mission to 1975 comes first. That was my dad's final wish after all. So if we still haven't found him by the time repairs are complete, I think we should give up. Is that okay? Are you sure? If we still haven't found him by then, it just wasn't meant to be. It's a relief to hear Suzaha say that. So where do we start? The pin is our only hint. We'll hit every store in Akiba that sells things like this. Maybe someone will know where it came from. What kind of stores? Akiba is full of niche stores where you can find strange and cool accessories. It's hard to sneak into Darikan in the daytime. There isn't a crowd out front like before, but pedestrian traffic remains constant. It takes us about 30 minutes to find a way in. Kurisu is back at the lab working on the time leap machine. It needs to be completed by 2pm on the 13th. If she's late, it could affect my ability to time leap which would lower my chances of saving Mayuri. Speaking of Mayuri, she wandered off somewhere in search of Suzuha's father. How does it look? According to Daru, Daru, who's examining the flooded satellite, I mean time machine, while Suzuha and I keep a lookout. Daru call, crawls out of the machine, he's covered in sweat, and his breathing is heavy. We quickly help pull his huge body out, the time machine is completely visible from the street. 
If someone were to see us up here, they might be report. Uh, they might report us to the police. It's been two weeks since the satellite appeared, but Akiba still has tourists who come to, just to see it. We need to take care not to be noticed. It's so freaking hot in there. It's worse than a sauna. Spend too much time in there and I'll turn into Dado Jerky. By the way, it's not going to fall on anything, right? The time machine is balanced precariously on an edge, but the police have hooked up support-wise. So Dali probably has nothing to worry about. Can it be fixed? Well, I still don't know for sure, but there is one thing I noticed just now. It's built kind of like the phone wave. That means there's a chance, right? I said I'm not sure. I need to poke around some more. Daru, super hacker. Everything depends on your skills now. You are the super hacker who will save the world. In 2036, people will worship you instead of Kurisu, the mother of the time machine. It's hacker. How many times do I have to tell you? Anyway, you have two days. Do whatever it takes, Daru. Let's place my hands on Daru's shoulders and look straight into his eyes. You're our only hope. No promises, man. And why two days? Well, because that's when Mayuri will die. But I can't say that. In two days, the weather condition will be perfect for creating the ring singularity. If we miss that window, we won't have another chance until next year. Nice excuse, Suzaha. Precisely. Fix it in two days? That's just nuts. But if you do, you'll earn the right to, to a date with Fadis. <laughs> well, he's pretty into it. Can you fix it? No problem. Great, now I just need to figure out how I'm going to convince Fadis. Well... Wow. So, O S H M star 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 A seven O one zero. We're searching for something with the same cryptic logo as the mystery pin. Honestly, I didn't think it would be this difficult. Akiba has plenty of niche stores, but they're all of electronic goods and PC parts. There aren't that many selling accessories like Suzuha's pins. We check every one we can find, but come up empty-handed. None of the store employees have any idea where it came from either. We even check nearby neighborhoods like Ueno and Asakusa, but nothing. Suzaha and I return to the lab with heavy hearts. Okay. Welcome back. Kurisu emerges from the development room to greet us. She's like... From the looks on your faces, I guess you didn't find anything. Where's Daru? He hasn't come back yet. It's already dark. So maybe he went straight home. It's too dark to work at Adikan now. Can't use lights because that would be too conspicuous to the people below. Mayuri isn't around. Did she make any progress in the search for Suzuha's father? I feel bad. There's no time for this. It's not for you. We're doing it to save Mayuri. Yeah. I start up Daduk's computer and search the net for communities of people who collect unique pins. I'll investigate tomorrow based on the information I find. There's a pin collecting group on a site called Free Pada, where everyone shows off their collections. I post there asking for information. I'm sleeping on the couch when a large, a loud alarm rings in my ears. Is it Sen? I jump up and see Kurisu and Suzaha. Kurisu is holding her phone. 
That's the source of the sound. Good morning. Good morning. A sour expression says it's not good at all. We should put ourselves in my shoes and see what it's like to be woken up suddenly like that. I checked the time on my phone. It's just before 7 a.m. You came to wake me up? Thanks. I didn't do it for you. I asked her to wake you up, Okabe Rintaro. There's something I want to show you. Ah, I realized that there's a strange object sitting on the table in front of me. What's this? A divergence meter. The number indicates the divergence value of the current world line. The meter dis displays 0.33718.7%. Divergence is measured from my original world line, which corresponds to zero. You made this? No. I brought it with me from 2036. These are Nixie tubes, right? Whoever made this has taste. I'd happily, I'd happily dub it Future Gadget Number Nine. How exactly does it work? It shouldn't be possible to measure changes like that. Suzuha shrugs. I don't know either. You don't know? Can you guess who made it? How should I know? You did, Okabe Rintaro. Huh? Huh? You made it, um, 11 years from now. It apparently works the same way your special power does. Huh. So this meter lets other people check world line divergence? I wish. I'm pretty sure only Okabe Rintaro would notice if the numbers changed. What? Then there's no point. Make something useful for once, Okabe. I ignore Kurisu's complaints. And look at the meter again. This is something I made. Fifteen years have passed since I completed it. Eleven years will pass before I complete it. It's a strange feeling. Only the person who made it knows how it works. Wait 11 years, I'm sure he'll have figured it out by then. Have you met me in the future? She did say I was an infamous, infamous terrorist in 2036. For some reason, Suzuha's expression darkens momentarily. No, never. Oh, because you're probably dead. So why are you showing me this? When the meter reads over 1%, you've made it to the beta world line. 1%. Right, reach 1% divergence and you'll save Shina Mayuri. I stare at the glowing red numbers. They don't budge. Just another 0 0.6. It seems so easy. But there are six digits right after the decimal place and no tens place. What does that mean? Something tells me it won't be as easy as it looks. You can have it. No point in me carrying it around. I hope you'll find a use for it. But will I? Based on recommendations from the BBS thread, I spend the morning visiting stores in Akiba. My destination runs the gamut from Otaku stores packed with anime goods to souvenir uh, shops full of Olympic memorabilia. I even visited a few that specialize in locally manufactured goods. But although I hit just about every kind of store that could be considered niche, I am unable to find anything that resembles Suzuha's pin. Maybe I should go all the way to Ikibukuro or Nakano. I start heading back to the lab, but just then, a street vendor catches my eye. The storekeeper is a foreigner covered in tattoos. The table next to him is covered with accessories and other fashion items. This is the first time I've seen such a stylish street stand in Akiba. Most ve uh, vendors just sell random junk. The 
it's not like I have anything to lose, so I walk over and check out the selection. Among the various accessories, I see a number of metal pins. What a coincidence. Could he have a pin like Suzaha's? I don't see the OS OSHM star 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 A7010 logo on any of the displayed accessories, but I'd better ask just to be sure. Um, he's a foreigner, so maybe I should use English. Oh god, this part. Our wives meet. His are as bright and blue as the sky. I quickly look away. Damn, he must think I'm a coward. Better get this over with. Hey, master. I am mad scientist. <laughs> All right. So cool. Son of a bitch. Hey, master. I am mad scientist. So cool. Son of a bitch. Hi, Nandeska. Can I help you? He says in Japanese. N he smiles a wide, toothy smile. Nice teeth. Nice teeth and answers in Japanese. I was hoping for more of a reaction. Um, I have a question if you don't mind. I take the photocopy of Suzuha's pin out of my pocket. Does this look familiar? The man stares at it for a while, then shrugs and shakes his head in an exaggerated manner, typically typical of Westerners. I want to know where it came from. Can you help me out? Find out? Oh, yeah, remember, remember. Sorry. Sorry. It's a little difficult, eh? What is he saying? By the way, where do you get this thing? That's what I want to know. I'll compensate you. I'm sorry. He apologized in broken Japanese. Looks like this is another dead end. Just in case, I give him my contact information and ask him to get in touch if he finds out anything. Then I turn to leave. Okabe Rintaro. Okabe Rintaro. Suzuha. Suzuha is standing a short distance away. She's holding a drink. It's my favorite. Dr. P. No, wait, that's cola. Please. Sup. Nama. Want a drink? I accept the offer and quench my thirst while leaning on the roadside fence. Last time I saw her, Suzuha was on her way to Kanda to continue the search. How long has she been standing here? Anything? Nope. So what was with your English back there? Oh my god, terrible. It sounded dumb, so dumb. So cool! Is that standard English in this era? Of course not. Oh, so it's an Okabe Rintaro original. There's no overseas travel in my time, so I wouldn't know. No overseas travel? What, what you mean at all? Pretty much. Travel permits are hard to get, and I'd never issue one for a vacation. I'd never seen a foreigner before coming to this time. So in the future, no one is allowed to leave Japan? Japan was like that a few centuries ago too, when the Tokugawa shogunate closed the country to the west. Sounds like CERN set international relations back hundreds of years. Perhaps that's why there's no war in Suzuha's time. It's hard for conflicts to emerge when races and cultures can't interact. Sounds kind of like a prison with invisible walls guarded by CERN and the Committee of 300. I mean, ending war is obviously a good thing, but... Anyway, there's no point thinking up, uh, thinking about the distant future now. We need to come up with a new plan. The sunlight beats on my head, making it hard to think. I feel like I'm standing in a sauna. Why does the sun hate me so much? Shining in the center of the sky like he owns the damn place. Damn it! Why can't we find any information on that damn pin? I suppose there's no skin off my back if we don't find Suzuha's father. As long as Daru fixes the time machine, nothing else matters. So why do I feel so bad about my lack of progress? I really don't know. Maybe I'm just frustrated by my own powerlessness. I can't save Mayuri. I can't fix Suzuha's time machine. I can't even help Kurisu with the time leap upgrade. 
So what am I good for? The only thing I can do is help Suzaha find her father. Maybe this pin is newer than we think. I mean, maybe it hasn't been made yet. Suzaha stretches, then looks at me with a calm smile. Maybe I'm not meant to meet him. I mean, we tried everything and still no sign. It's just not in the cards, I guess. I feel a surge of anger at her words. Here I am, stewing in self-loathing, and she acts like it doesn't matter. How can you give up? We're still... We, we still have one more day. Why are you getting mad? Everyone's fighting for you. Don't you get it? Me? I want to prioritize my area over everything else. But you're still a lab man, a friend. When's a friend in when a friend's in trouble, you want to help them. That's how Mayuri felt, and I agree. That's why I'm searching. So how dare you be the first to give up? You don't have to yell. Don't disappoint me like this. Tell myself to calm down. This is just my own feelings to, of impo impotence boiling over. There's no time for this. I'm sorry, but maybe you should think about how I feel. I realize that I realize that we have an audience. Some pedestrians are grinning at us, like they think we're a bickering couple or something. I take a deep breath. You're right. I shouldn't have said that. It's too awkward to make eye contact. So I look around, pretending to think. Alright, what next? I wonder how the other lab mems are progressing. I'm especially concerned about Daru. Depending on how uh, on the situation, he might need some relief. He's been working in the heat for hours, so we should bring him something cool to drink. And then there's Mayuri. She's been working alone, trying to find some information on Suzuha's father. If I close my eyes, I still can still recall her death, deaths in every detail. I resist the urge to pound my head against the wall. Although we still have over 24 hours before that happens, I can't help but worry about leaving her alone. But currently, all I can do is search for that pin. We decide to try Ikibukuro as our last stop for her, or for today. It would be nice to visit home, but I don't have the time, and besides, Suzuha's with me. A search turns up nothing. As the evening wears on without a single lead, Suzuha and I, and I grow quieter and quieter. We're exhausted from walking, and we can't shake the feeling that all our efforts are failures, are futile. This isn't good. So, yeah, By the way, I try stirring up conversation. I should get her to talk about the future. After all, she's a time traveler. This is a once in a lifetime chance. Well, you could time travel again and talk to her more. I remember how shocked Kurisi was to learn that she only lives to be 44. And I was told that I became a terrorist. Am I really famous in 2036? As a terrorist? Oh. So what did I do to be called a terrorist? We rebelled against CERN. You're actually one of the founding members of the Resistance, just like my dad. I helped found the Resistance? I guess it makes sense. Given what we're going through now, Suzuha is from the future of the of this timeline, where Mayuri is doomed to die, and where Seren forces Kritisu to build a time machine. In such a future, how could I not rebel against Seren? Rebellion against the system. Destruction of order. A new age of chaos. Weren't those my ambitions as a mad scientist? How stupid. Stupid? How can I still be chasing some Chunyubo fantasy when I couldn't even save Mayuri? You're fighting to free humanity. I think it's a noble cause. Suzuha is part of the resistance I form. 
Does that mean she's my subordinate in the future? What sort of man am I? Suzuha's expression darkens. I said we never met, remember? Never? Never. Of course. You were killed. Killed by Sen in 2025. Uh, I was killed by the same people who killed Mayuri. Of course. They had no reservations about murdering an innocent girl. I doubt they would hesitate to kill a terrorist. Maybe I should have told you sooner. Understand? If you don't change the future, you're gonna die in 15 years. So how old will he be? Shinama Yuri will die. You will die. Makise Kurisu will be a safe to, safe to CERN. It ends badly for every lab man. What about Daru? Um, I don't remember hearing about him. I have heard legends of a wizard class hacker though. Though I don't understand what wizard class means in the first place. Wizard class. I coined that term. I can imagine Daru slowly insinuating himself into every corner of the internet until he becomes a godlike virtual presence that not even CERN can comprehend. Anyway, I don't want that to happen to you guys. That's one more reason I need to find an IBN 5100 and change the future. Until I came to this time, you guys were just stories. Histories. But now, you're my friends. I want to save you. Appreciated. You are a lab mem. Now and forevermore. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Ooh. Are you sure I can finish the time leap machine in a day? We still haven't found our lifter substitute, remember? I can't complete the upgrade without it. I already told Kalisu that I was confident in her ability to complete the time the machine on time. But it occurs to me that I forgot to tell her about the 42 inch CRT. Our lifter is the 42 inch CRT downstairs. The electrical discharge phenomena occurs when it's turned on. So don't worry about it. Just finish the upgrade. I send a reply and decide to keep searching for the fin with Suzuha just a bit longer. Time is quickly running out. Is there anything more that we can do? It's early evening, but the roof of Radikan is still hotter than hell. When I provide Dadu with the refreshing gift of Dr. P, or Dr. Pepper, a frown appears on his sooty face. You're supposed to give me an ice cold zero calorie cola. Common sense, man. I forgot he's a cola guy. No sense letting it go to waste. I drink the Dr. P. <laughs> what a dickhead. Dadu and Suzaha start discussing the time machine. Maya and I watch from a short distance away. Hey, Okarin. Isn't it amazing that the satellite was a time machine? Of course it's amazing. Oh. Yeah, I so. guess so. I thought that Tardos time machine was a car. A 1970s Chevy. It's e never even occurred to me to suspect this, the satellite. I should know better than to take everything for granted. In retrospect, the satellite was suspicious from the start. Not only had it appeared out of nowhere, but Tider only started posting afterwards. I'm disappointed in myself for not realizing the connection. I'm glad Suzaha. Suzaha sound wasn't heard in the crash. I doubt it was anything like a crash. It probably just appeared here, displacing the walls, which then collapsed around it. After all, the time machine isn't self-propelled. It just it doesn't fly. I heard it's really hard to drive. I guess she heard that from Suzaha. If the gravitational watch call it coordinates are just a teeny bit off, the whole time machine becomes a jelly man and goes ploop. So why didn't she go ploop? 
And she even said her time machine's unstable, since it's not a CERN model. I'm worried about her trip to 1975. Do you think I should go with her? I wonder if I'd fit. You know, if you sent Mayuri back in time, she'd probably be okay. What would you do in 1975? I'd cheer Suza san on. Of course, I'd hold her hand super tight and tell her that everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Something tells me that won't be much help. Hey, Okarin. Do you think the time machine has a name? A name? That's the least of what I want to know about the time machine. Time permitting, I'd like to spend a whole day picking Suzuha's brain. I'm pretty sure John Titus' time machine had a model number. But the John Titor from 2000 might not have been Suzuha. There was no John Titor in 2000 on this world line after all. Although I suppose it's possible that Suzuha will drop by 2000 after travelling to 1975. If you want to know, just ask Titor. Oh yeah! No, you should didn't think of that. <laughs> Mayuri giggles, then runs off to talk to Suzuha. She comes back quickly. Uh, yep, it has a name. What is it? Hmm, FG204 something something, she said. Something something. Anyway, don't you think Darukun and Suzu-san are a good match? Huh? Huh? Mayuri's jumping all over the place today. I look at Daru and Suzuha again. How do you figure? Daru's all about fathers, you know? Oh, really? She tilts her head to the side. Good grief. Mayuri and I aren't of any use. I would prefer to leave Daru and Suzuha to it and resume the search for Suzuha's father, but Mayuri seems happy just sitting here. We don't have any leads on the pin or its owner. Maybe two days just aren't enough. No, that's quitter talk. Like I told Suzaha, I don't want to give up. Besides, even if we don't get the information we need this time, I can use the time leap machine to repeat these two days until we do. Oh yeah, Mayuri, what happened to your costumes? There's only a few days until Komima. I remember Mayuri pulling all-nighters to get her costumes done. Has that changed? Huh? I already made two costumes. One for Cade chan and one for Fubuki chan Weren't you making a third one for Lukako? Yeah, I was, but I couldn't convince her, so I gave up this time. Hey, can my Yushi take a closer look at a uh, closer look at the time machine? Just don't get in their way. Okie dokie. Mayuri beams happily, then runs over to the time machine. She's acting like this is a field trip. Behind her, the sun glows dark and orange on the horizon. It's quite a view from up here. After a few minutes watching the sunset in silence, I realize that Suzuha is standing beside me. She must have come over as Mayuri left. Our shadows are long and murky. Hashida Itaru is amazing. He said if things go well, he could have the time machine fixed by tomorrow. He's a man who gets things done. And he looks so unhealthy and slow. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its covers. Yeah, I have a better impression of him now. Um, hey. There's something I want to say, and I feel like I'll never get another chance. Why be so, why so melodramatic? I'm really grateful to you, all of you. When I came to this time, I didn't know anyone. 
I was all alone in a world completely different from my own. This era is so peaceful. That's a wonderful thing. But it scared me. All I was uh, knew, knew was the fight against CERN. But now I have friends, real friends, who I can share my secrets with. All these people who lived before I was born are working so hard for my sake. It's a strange feeling, but a happy one too. I wanted you to know that. Suzaha's tone is wistful, why? I try to speak, but she continues before I can. Living with you guys in this time, it's been really fun. When I met you, you were all so strange and unique and over the top. I was kind of shocked at first, actually. But before I knew it, I started to enjoy spending time with you. 2036 is peaceful too. People don't even fight anymore. Did you know that? How could I? I'm not even alive in 2036, right? Alright, oh, sorry. Anyway, people don't fight, ever, about anything. All forms of conflict, war included, have vanished, poof, without a trace. That's kind of peaceful, though. Instead, everyone has dead eyes, like fish. No one has ambition. Nobody dreams. They just trudge through their lives without a single complaint. Oh sure, people smile, but they never get angry or sad. There's no individuality. Everyone's a robot. You got really mad at me before, remember? I was really surprised, but at the same time I was really happy. You're a strange girl. <laughs> I guess so. Suzaha looks at the time machine. Dado and Mayuri are standing next to it, talking cheerfully about something or another. You're all so bright and full of life. I envy you. Shina Mayuri, Hashida Ituru, even Makise Kurisu, and of course you. Don't be ridiculous. There's nothing enviable about me. I'm worthless. I can't even save Mayuri. I want to be more like you. If you ask me, you're the amazing one. I'm happy to hear you say that. It's thanks to all of you that I'm still going strong. Being a lab ma'am, even for just a little while, was great. She smiles then. A soft, sad smile that tears at my heart. What does it mean? She's not coming back. Being with you guys, even for just a little while, was great. Suzuha? Change the future, Okabe Rintaro. Make it a world like this one, where people can be free. Hey, 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 come on. Why are you being so sentimental? Does she not want to go to 1975? But I mean, she's got a time machine, so she can't. So can't she just come back afterwards? Even as I think it, I realize how wrong I am. Of course, when Suzuha completes her mission and brings us the IBM 5100, the world line will change. The future will be rewritten, and the 2036 she knows will cease to exist. To hear her describe it, the future is an awful place. But even so, it was her home. She has friends there, I'm sure. Comrades in arms and memories of her father, barrel title. All of that will be lost to her forever. No wonder she's getting sentimental. After we fix the time machine, let's have a party. Thanks. Thank you. And yet, she's still smiling that sorrowful smile. Afterwards, I hit the streets again in search of the pin. But the day ended w without a single lead, so I reluctantly returned to the lab and tried searching the internet. A couple of hours later, and still no luck. So far, I've accompanied... I've accomplished absolutely nothing. My frustration is mounting. I can timely begin, but will that really help us find Suzuha's father? 
an unfamiliar number. Who is that? It's me. Hi, Mr. Okabe Rintaro. Hi, Mr. Okabe Rintaro. The voice is heavily accented, and I can barely make it out. Who is this guy? Senka. Sen? I jumped to my feet and scanned the room. Then run to the window and check the road below. No suspicious figures in sight. Kurisa comes out of the development room and gives me a questioning look, but I wave her back inside. Cern, what is that? I gulp and carefully choose my words. Identify yourself. You, one more afternoon, came to, came to our factory, make inquiry, and told me your telephone number, you know? What are you saying? No, wait. I've heard this broken Japanese before. The strange Japanese filters through my brain, connecting synapses. That's right, it's that foreign street vendor I met this mo uh, this afternoon, Akiba. Identify. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're welcome. I do custom work. Yesterday night, a guest came here, I remember. That guest would please make pin badge, same one you had. I don't get quite, I get what he's saying, but he seemed really excited about it. I'll head there right now. I go to the same spot as before, although his stand has already closed. The Western is waiting for me. Oh, oh. Okabe, hello. Where did that guest of yours go? Client come here was yesterday time. The blue-eyed white man shrugs his shoulders. So it was yesterday. He contacted me because he remembered. What's his contact info? His name and address. Poison. Guest just for simulation. Private information have nothing. Uh, so last night someone came by wanting to make metal pins with the same design as Sizahar's. But he died of poisoning? Uh, the guest was just a simulation? So there's no private information? I'm not following. Japanese very studious. And awarding private information become nervous and serious, yes? That doesn't help. If, if guest had gave name or telephone number, however, no leak. No leak. That is business. Uh, fatigue suddenly weighs down on my shoulders. I don't understand a word he's saying anymore. My head is full of question marks. In hindsight, I should have brought Kurisu to speak English for me. I guess I'll just have to wing it. What did your customer look like? Man? Woman? Well, well so young. So young or so middle. So middle. Japanese have young face. Just mm, by look, no understand. Anything else? Um, maybe a judo fighter or pro wrestler? What judo, pro wrestler? Judo. What do you mean by that? Yes! Yes! That wasn't a yes, no question. What the hell do you mean? Ah, oh, balloon! Balloon! What balloon? Balloon. Balloon. Judo, pro judo. wrestler? Good! Good. No, not good. Are you trying to confuse me? I want to ask more questions, but the foreigner suddenly sees a policeman walking by and runs off. I consider chasing him, but decide against it to avoid police attention. I give up. The search has hit a dead end, and we have barely any time left to find Barrel Titor. I can... <clears throat> I can time leap again starting at 2pm tomorrow. Looks like all I can do is wait until Christine is done working, and then leap to the time this suspicious character appears at the stand. Kurisu carefully connects the two cords she's holding. Kansai. Done. The time leap she... <laughs> Time leap machine is done. It's 2.30 p.m. on the 13th, about 20 minutes later than before. Kurisu walks into the lounge with a satisfied look on her face. It's just her, me, and Suzuhara in the lab. I Daru and Mayuri head to Radikan ostensi ostensibly to work on the time machine. So that's the time leap machine. Suzuhara gazes at the now complete time machine in awe. I've already explained to her... How time leap, uh, how time leaping works, she probably already knows. It's as different as can be from Suzuha's time machine, which can physically displace actual bodies. It makes you remember the future, right? That's pretty interesting. 
Suzaha crosses her arms behind her head and looks up at the ceiling. Intuition, sixth sense, deja vu. I wonder if those things are actually you recalling future memories. So, some of CERN's researchers in my time came up with the theory that memory is a way of sharing information across world lines. Maybe it's similar to that. I just wish we knew more about Okabe, Okabe's reading Steiner thing. Is it unique to Okabe? Or does everyone have the potential for it? And Okabe is just stronger by coincidence. One thing for certain. My consciousness leaps to the past along with my memories. I still don't understand why that is. It would make more sense if you experience the change in the present like you do when we send a email. Does your consciousness depend on your memories? The problem is that consciousness doesn't have a form that we can see. Same goes for the soul. Those things are still in the realm of religion. Even in 2036, the existence of the soul hasn't been proven, and nobody's proven what forms consciousness either. I see. That's a little disappointing. Sending my consciousness back has let me change some future events with more precision than Dmail. But other events are locked in by convergence. I can change the method of Mayuri's death, but never the fact that she dies. That's not how it works. The future is always determined. Then why does the path there change? Because the world line changes. When you leap into the past and take different actions from before, divergence changes, if only a little bit. In most cases, that fluctuation won't amount to more than 0.000001% on the divergence meter. Small changes might not register at all. When you change the cause, the effect merely shifts to a separate already existing world line. Since those two world lines are almost exactly the same, you barely feel any difference. So is that why reading Stana didn't react? It's not like the previous world lines disappear. It keeps existing as another possible world line. That's the many worlds interpretation, right? In any case, they are not parallel worlds. So is the future reconstructed? I guess you could say that. I'm confused again. Maybe it's impossible for me to fully understand the structure of the universe. Anyway, that's enough discussion. It's time for me to leap again. I explain the situation to Kurisu and have her activate the time leap machine immediately. Guys, I'm going to leave it here at this time leap so that we can continue on from this next time. So see you in the next video.